welcome to the journey through the business wilderness. Uh, today I have a very special guest with me, Mr. Brian Goldwork. Brian, how are you? Very good. Yourself? Yeah, I'm well, I'm well. How's things? Good, good. Good in the startup world in, in Melbourne. It's good. Things are moving well. Um, so, Brian, tell us a bit about yourself. Sure. I, I'm a passionate startup advocate. My specialty is trademarks and intellectual yep. property because I, I found building a strong foundation was my interest and yep. then we can take on the world <laughs> and that's what the intellectual property side yep. is. Yep. yep, most definitely. So many young entrepreneurs um, have different ambitions, aspirations and so on and they begin their business or their ventures or their journeys with some wonderful ideas. But many of them tend to forget that one step. Before they go on and they execute their game plan or execute their, their uh, idea, they forget or many don't even know that they need to check to be, to see if their idea has been done before, if they can trademark their, their idea, if they can get the right patents for their idea. And that's a common problem across the board. Can you tell us how we can avoid these issues, uh, how we know where to go, how to go, and who to see. Sure, sure. That's a lot of questions in that. But, <laughs> but I'll start by saying on the positive note, creating a brand name and creating something that might attract customers or people is a fun activity. And it's usually um, quite stimulating. Yeah. Once that's done then capturing it, and often now it's a, a domain name, yeah. is probably too easy. You just type on the domain name and yeah. put an S on the end and potentially get it. Correct. And then you think you've got something. So I don't blame the people for stopping there and then moving on. But when you are experienced in this area, the downside is you've actually built up a good business that people love, they love your brand name, and then you receive a letter saying, you've got to change your brand name in seven days or elsewhere, taking all the money you've ever made in your life. So you have to completely rebrand. And I know there are expenses in branding and protecting yourself, but once you've created a connection with customers, to have to rebrand is very expensive and perhaps has wasted the whole project. So yes, you're, you're correct in... First thing is, great, create the new brand and then do some due diligence on does someone else own it, is it potentially protectable? And, and to do that, to do that is, is free. Um, IP Australia, so it's ipaustralia.gov.au. Yeah, we'll put the website up. Has a search engine and it's called Atmos. And you can type in your, your word or your brand and see what comes up. And that's a good first initial search. And the second one is a Google search to look at the general market as well to make sure that the general market doesn't have the exact same word for the same goods and services. So pretty basic steps and resources that are basically available to everyone. Now, let's go back a step. When thinking of a business name or an idea, can, can you tell the wider, wider audience some of the things they should take into account or some of the things they should be wary of? That's also a good question because the definition of a trademark is the brand needs to be distinctive and not descriptive of the goods and services. So the first thing you need to know is, okay, I'm selling, I'm doing human resources I can't call my company Human Resources or HR. You're not going to get it. You're yeah. going to be blocked. But you want a name that's reflective on it, people power or something that reflects sure. Human Resources yeah. but yeah. not the name yeah. Human Resources. So, And the second part of the definition of a trademark is that no one else has used it or registered the right. So sometimes it's a bit of luck because you never know. Other people might have had that idea but that's where a search can knock that one out. So in creating a name, a good name, from my experience, connotates the benefits of your services, but doesn't describe it exactly. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so 
that's the that's the trademark side of things. Now we constant we constantly hear the word patents. Yes. What's the difference? People want to, what's the difference <laughs> between a trademark and a patent? That's right. Yeah. Good 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 question. So intellectual property is a big word yep. that covers a lot of things, but it doesn't actually mean anything. Yeah. Under intellectual property, there are four categories to protect your idea or concept or business. One is trademark, two is patent, three is design registration, and four is copyright. Now going back to patent, patent is an inventive product or service. So it has to be inventive to what exists before. So it's got to have a function and it's got to be more inventive than what existed before and new. So a patent needs to have considerable merit in being inventive and progressive from what existed before, functional, whereas a trademark's just the name. The design is for the shape of a product and the copyright is a literary or, or artistic work related to um, how you describe or market your product. And they're the different categories of intellectual property. So yes, a good question is, I have a new idea, what type of intellectual property could I potentially see? And one is a brand name, two is, is it a shape that's designed, or is it functional? Yeah, it's potentially a pattern. And and design and pattern, if someone, <laughs> not if someone, when you are listening to this, the most important aspect of a design and pattern is that it has to be new. You can't have shown the marketplace or put it on your website. It has to be new for you to obtain those rights. So looking into it before you've shown the world is, is the only way to potentially get protection. Okay, so you mentioned also the copyright. Yes. So how, how does somebody obtain that and when and why? Sure, good question. Yeah. So the good news is copyright is free. Yeah. <laughs> so there's no cost there. The definition is that whoever creates the artwork or writes the literature owns the copyright. Okay. So on one hand, if you're the creative and you come up with a blurb on the product or service, or you're the photographer and you take the image, the person clicking the button or writing it owns it. Okay. However, if, if, if you're a business and you contract a third party to take the photos, do the website, come up with the marketing material, the default position is they own it, okay. unless in the services contract, upon payment, all copyright is transferred to the company or the individual. That, so you have to be diligent that you want to own the copyright, even if you didn't create it directly. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Now let's give you a bit of a scenario. I have an idea. It needs to be built. I don't have a development background, right? Correct. I need to bring in a third party to build this product for me. Yes. If this, uh, this party signs a non-disclosure agreement and moving forward, let's say this product grows, becomes popular, it's generating revenue, Things, things are moving well, this party then turns around and says, oh, we created this product, um, we, we, we want to share it. How do, you, how, do you, how do you go about that? Sure. So, to clarify that and, and keep it, the non-disclosure agreement informs the third party that unless they do a business interaction with you, they're not allowed to tell any other party without your permission. Yeah. If they then progress and develop the product for you, whether it's write code or produce it, you need a services agreement with them. And within the services agreement, you need that all intellectual property will be assigned to you, the um, owner and yep. concept idea, upon payment. And that needs to be agreed before they start working on it. And that clarifies that once you pay, they have nothing to do with it. Awesome. Awesome, there you go. Because I'm sure it's now, because you know how the common thing is amongst young people and businesses in general is everybody's trying to build that next Facebook, the next Instagram, the next LinkedIn. So anybody who's got a bit of an idea, 
they're reaching out if they don't have any coding background or development background they're instantly reaching out to others trying to implement things trying to build things from 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 raw and a, a lot of the times they're they're falling short because they're not thinking of this uh idea as a business it's more as oh let's build this app and then hopefully we'll get a seller or uh, sorry a buyer they come in uh, ho hoping that the buyer will come in and buy it off them and they make millions million dollars that's the, that's sort of the dream that's that's out there at the moment but and on the other hand a few people have gone out there spent a whole heap of money and they've had after it's it's gone now they've had people come back and claim and ask for funds because they were involved in the whole process hence why i asked the questions so, so we can it clarified so those of you out there who are in the process of doing so so we're nice and safe there for those of you with any ideas we've basically covered a few uh, hurdles that you can avoid any other any other ideas or let's say uh, as they say prevention is better than cure things that they can pre prevent from happening yes going public is is detrimental to the pattern and design aspect so if you have a website or if you want to ask people what do you think uh, that there's a dangerous phase unless they're a professional service provider that's within the confidential zone so going public has has certainly um, stopped many projects from potentially capturing intellectual property I completely, and I work with all startups every day, so I understand the budget restrictions that yeah. some may have. Um, but I, I don't recommend shortcuts are taken and outsourcing everything um, and losing control of what you said is you've got the idea, but everyone's doing different parts because that's how you just get it live. Um, Ultimately, you ask why are you doing it? You don't own any of it. Yeah, exactly. And if someone did buy, they wouldn't buy you. They'd buy your advertising company or your market, the, the marketing company you're using. They wouldn't acquire you. So, so step by step, um, considering what you can achieve with, within your budget and what, why you would go another way is, is important to speak to someone like yourself at each step. Um, that, that's the advantage of speaking or listening to this is others have gone through it and worked through the hard ways and and there are usually solutions whereby if we try to hold as much as we can of the intellectual property as far as we can go down the path you're in a better position if you can get there so so um definitely each phase needs to be considered carefully before disclosing it and and just outsourcing everything Awesome, awesome. Any other pieces of advice you, you'd like to share? Ideas are great. We love them. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's My work's great. I get to hear all different ideas. Um, the challenge is, is, I feel, in Australia or international, such as US straight away, where do you start your idea? Um, that's a challenge. Is Australia a good test market or should we go straight to the US? It's case by case, but you need to consider that because time gets away and trends move on. So if your concept is good for now, maybe you have to hit it hard and go straight to the US. Um, speed is so crucial. Speed speed has, um, yes, I've procrastinated as everyone does. I'll get to it, I'll do it. Yeah. And, and that leads to the next point of a, a big dilemma is do you do it in the evenings and weekends? Like, <laughs> few of my projects or do you say no I'm going full time or do you take a month off work and do it full time and and really whilst I'm conservative and everyone needs employment if, if you're going to give something a go it's got to be full time so then the business community including investors and others do take you more seriously and the ones that do it full time even though it's a sacrifice in the short term do progress a lot further it's riskier but that's that's what you've got to consider um, early on is, is, is this something, and, and no one can answer that. No one's got, not many get the opportunity where they've thrown money 
to say, oh, no, you really got to make up your mind. You've got to make up your mind. Yeah, you you got to say, am I, do I want to do this for the rest of my life? Do I really love doing this every day? Do I wake up every morning thinking about this? Or do, do, I, or do I get up in the morning saying, ah, if 50, 50, 50. That's, that's, that's the real question. Because if you love something, you'll sit it out, endure the pain you need to, because there, <laughs> there's many hurdles, many obstacles along the way, and you will eventually get there. And it's not really even for the rest of your life. It's, yeah. I want to give this concept, idea, exactly. a go. Exactly. And to give it a go, it, I'm going to do it properly. And, and being connected to the investor world, where I protect their investments in IP, yeah. they take you seriously once you've committed to it. They will see what is your commitment. And, and if you are pursuing funds, being half committed will not obtain any interest. No, exactly. Right. Awesome. So, just quickly, where, where can people find you, Brian? Oh. Ask you questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Trademark.ventures is my website. Social media? Social media. I'm on LinkedIn more heavily, a bit on Instagram, but under Trademark.ventures or Brian Goldberg is uh, always happy. I work with startups. The aim is let's work out what you've got and potentially got without the fees, and then if you, if you need something done, happy to do it. But always happy to speak to any startup that's got a good idea and, and wanting to know where, where to get where to protect it and where to get started. Where to get started in your startup? How's that? <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, Brian. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. it. We'll catch you all on the next show. Take care. <laughs>